Your classmate Tem the Alpaca is murdered. You're a carnivore that's under suspicion of killing him. And you now have a sexual attraction to a rabbit. And you're not sure if it's just a sexual attraction or you want to actually devour her. These are the trials and tribulations of the average teenager, Lagoshi the Grey Wolf. Beastars by Paru Itagaki. Spoiler warning for everyone who hasn't read it. If you want to or are interested, you got the Netflix anime, but you also have 22 volumes, which is 196 chapters. It isn't very long of a series to get through, and I'm pretty sure you could smash it out, honestly, in like three weeks. First off, I just want to talk about Lugoshi, his role in the story, and kind of his role in life. Lugoshi is a grey wolf, and he is a carnivore in the setting of Beastars, so naturally herbivores feel very unsafe around him. But he's actually a quiet, reserved, very timid carnivore. He, he doesn't act out or lash out. He's someone who's very closed off and quiet and doesn't speak unless spoken to really. He has morals of genuine kindness. He doesn't really try to treat people badly and he always tries and does the right thing. He does talk about how he's always used to being discriminated just for being a wolf because he's terrifying. People look at him and he always sees the fear that herbivores especially have for him. He always hides his fangs and his claws whenever near one because he never wants people to think that he has any bad intentions. What I find personally interesting about him is that there's so much he evokes as a coming of age story, but not your average kind of high schooler trying to figure out who they want to do or be because he does it in stages. He thinks about what it is that he wants and he tries to achieve it and he's pretty content, but then he realizes it's not as simple as that. Things get more complex and he realizes that. that I thought I knew what I was talking about, turns out I don't. And the more I try and figure it out what it is to be someone who grows up and try to find my place in the world, the more I dislike the world. And it's something that you can, I guess, identify with a lot, especially if you see what is ahead of you, especially in your like late teens, you see what it is you're all going to be doing for the rest of your life. And you can see that there's like so much that you dislike about it, whether it be the use of drugs to get through the day, alcohol, or giving in to temptation and working yourself to the bone for not a lot of reward. These are the subtle things I think Lugoshi slowly notices, but at the same time, He's trying to make sure that what he does personally and by working on himself gives him so much value that it doesn't matter what it is he tries to figure out what to do just as long as he's growing and he's learning more about the world around him. Lagoshi is cool because once you feel like you've figured him out, there's another layer to him. And it may not be the biggest layer, like he goes from 1 to 10 over the course of the series, but he changes and becomes the best version of himself more and more. He becomes a more agile fighter, but he doesn't fight for selfish reasons. He tries to make sure that whatever he's fighting for isn't just for his benefit. You know, it's for the benefit of others. And he tries to evoke and utilize the experiences of all different animals and beasts that he's encountered along his journey. When he first starts fighting, it's out of personal selfish reasons. And it is for the sake of others, but I think he starts to realize that maybe what it is that I want and what other people want aren't the same thing, but trying to get stronger to make sure that I can at least keep these two different sides of myself at peace and together is probably something worth fighting for. Visually, he probably grows the most out of any character. You can look at his facial features or what he's wearing and tell exactly what arc he's in in the entire story. He goes from having just a regular old look to then losing all of his fur, getting the infamous claws on his eyes, getting shot here in this ear and losing a bit of that, getting a stitch and shot in the stomach, taking out his fangs, and then of course losing one ear. He grows visually and the scars on his body represent the things he's experienced. One of the things that I think is so underrated about Lugoshi is his family backstory. Learning about who his family was and how his grandfather is a Komodo dragon. And that opens up the door to interspecies relationships, which we'll get to later. But that's a cool narrative way to do it because the way in which Gosha, the Komodo dragon grandfather, talks to Lugoshi and you can see the similarities between the two, not only the way they speak, but visually as well. You compare Lugoshi to other Grey Wolves in the series and you start to see that they have something about them that is different from him and you realize it's certain features. He slumps like his grandfather to hide his carnivore features. His eyes are actually the very, very slint, small dotted eyes of a Komodo dragon. They're not iris full like other wolves are. Wolves categorized in this world are to be very outgoing and positive. 
to which Lagoshi isn't, like his grandfather and where he's quiet, reserved, and he only speaks when spoken to and only stands up for stuff and gets loud when it comes to something that he's extremely passionate about, whether it be about two carnivores fighting or a herbivore in trouble. And it's because of that heritage he's also extremely headstrong and he doesn't really realize the stuff around him that's happening he's fully fleshed out and he learns from that and he wants to learn you know he he, he learns from his experiences and from other animals and he wants to learn as much as he can speaking with the people he lives in the beast apartments with he learns more about the sea beasts he learns more about herbivores and how they actually do dislike being saved or taken care of just because they were born in a small frailer body they do not feel like they have the power to stand up for themselves so it feels demeaning when someone else does especially when it's a carnivore and that's something that he realizes is that maybe fighting for them is a good thing but also making sure that i don't trample on their own achievement or i'm fighting for myself as well his family backstory is great because you also start to see that lagoshi has a dark past and he has regrets despite being like a very quiet timid person there's also a lot of rage and a lot of regret learning about his mother his mother someone who cared so much about her looks and then being the hybrid daughter of a komodo dragon and a wolf slowly started to see her appearance change and get all these scales and that to me was one of the most tragic stories in the whole entire series and it does it in such a great way where we feel like there's this person that had one of the worst experiences in the entire story of being an interspecies character but then it gives you context for Lagoshi and his wants of course to like marry Haru and honestly have a family but this is the result what if he has a child who's exactly like his mother and what does that mean and whether or not it would be something that is worth risking and I think what's great about Lagoshi is that he knows what he wants and he's willing to strive to get to it He's always looking out for others and he always is trying to make sure that he himself understands what he believes is right. It's a very Shonen-esque kind of protagonist, but it's still endearing and doesn't feel like the newest thing on the block, but also doesn't have to be, especially in Lagoshi's case, because it feels like the circumstances he's put in are so unique that it kind of creates a new almost persona for him specifically. I kind of relate to him a lot in terms of being like we're very quiet, just like in high school. But that being said, I'm not very tall or, you know, intimidating but there are these things about him that he always keeps within himself and doesn't bother other people with his problems and it's something that is admirable but at the same time can crush him unless he tries to get that help Again, he also brings up the great story of trying to figure out what you want to do. And I'm a sucker for those things, like 100%. I think it's great because he doesn't have the answer straight away, but he knows what he wants to do. And he thinks that by doing it, he'll get there. Dropping out of school and then going to work in a noodle shop is like so out of left field. But I saw in the later chapters when he was doing it, that he felt like he was achieving something personally that felt like a huge deal. And that in turn made me realize just because I think that's kind of stupid to him, him. That is the best thing for him right now. And it was cool. And and moving into an apartment on your own, trying to figure out how to adult relate a lot to that's not easy, especially when you have no clue what to do. So Lagoshi is a, a, a great character. And I think what's cool that Paru does is to make sure visually that he has different moments of growth that you can look at and distinguishly say, this is a moment that is very important in this kid's life. In terms of the other characters, Haru. Haru, I don't feel like we got enough of, honestly. Haru is a cool character because she's a small little Netherland dwarf rabbit, but she has the personality of someone who could be the size of Lagoshi or even twice that size. She makes herself known and she's kind and polite, but she also isn't scared to say what she thinks. And she does kind of drift through life. And I think coming into contact with Lagoshi makes her think more about what it is that I want and how I'm going to get there, right? I really don't think we got a lot of Haru. I think we should have gotten a bit more, mostly because she impacts Lagoshi views on herbivores and interspecies relationships so much that it's only kind of a memory of her that we start to see and there aren't that many chapters of her own except only in the early volumes you know with the whole Shishigumi arc um, when he moves out of school I miss those kinds of stories with Haru and she does prop again again and again later when Lagoshi goes to meet her family but it's something I wish I wanted to see more and she is more at the forefront of seeing what it means to be a herbivore to date a carnivore and what it is to be someone who sees their own kind of people as food the way she deals with that is interesting because it's kind of like accepting what your fate would be and living your life regardless of it she talks about how one day she knows she'll probably die by being eaten by a carnivore but she goes through 
through life regardless because to worry about it and be scared of it to sacrifice your own way of living really cool way to think about it you know and she stands out from other characters and she doesn't do things because they're a trend she does them because she wants to her design is really cool because you can have a very comedic side of her when she's loud and yelling and then of course the very cute side i just want to stay also not really attracted to her in any kind of way i don't i don't see the appeal but hey man good for you if you do no furries in this room louis is someone that i think had a lot of potential to grow the most and I, I think he really did but for me visually and mostly dialogue it doesn't feel the same in how he grew it feels like his biggest kind of character development was around the same time with Haru was when he joins the Shishigumi he becomes their leader and he tries to become like a carnivore in a sense and he eats meat that is so unique and I didn't see the story going that way and I thought it was really cool because it was kind of like a character going down a dark road and trying to find out what it is about them that makes them who they are and what it is that they can achieve through whatever means and it's it's cool because the characters don't feel like they're all pushing towards the same goal but they're going their own way and it all kind of interconnects right it's kind of like when you go to high school and you feel like everyone's doing their own thing but at the end we're all coming together and realizing what it is about us that will make us and maybe maybe saying goodbye forever or not I do think it is kind of a cool way with Louis to show his relationship as well with Juno who's the wolf and having this attraction between the two it's not the same for Lagoshi because he isn't Lagoshi he's not willing to take that risk and and be that person to be with someone who is a carnivore he knows that there's too much in his life that's at stake to take that leap and you know he just finds a way to be content in his situation and be grateful for the life that he was given because he was going to be just another piece of meat sold to someone to be eaten he finds his own way to deal with that i think his design's really really cool especially later on. i think at the beginning it was kind of bland but then later you really do feel like louis has this very unique style and stands out from a lot of the pages him and lagoshi as like rivals and friends is great because they care for each other and that it's hard for them to kind of put into words what it is they mean to each other because they are friends but they're not the best friends they don't hug and say i love you or anything like that but they're people who through each other can be stronger than they actually are and that's kind of paralleled with yaya and gosha as the like the old b stars of like you know being an older generation that working together could have been this crazy new way of taking care of the world essentially i do like a lot of the characters so like gihun as like the the panda he's great but he he has his moments where he shines and then he kind of goes away i think one of the downsides of having so many characters is that it's hard to give all of them enough time I think the villains are really cool. I think Melon is my favorite villain as opposed to Riz. And mostly because it feels like Melon has a bit more of a backstory that is very specific and unique and reminds me so much of characters like the Joker, right? This character who lives in, a, in an endless paradox of self-loathing and loving. Melon being the product of an interspecies relationship can't taste anything it all tastes like sand due to you know his taste buds his genes it's cool because it shows that he's willing to try anything and the only thing that maybe gives him any kind of feeling is pain and suffering and i do think that maybe he didn't have the best end but i do remember him more than riz terrifying i'd say them both melon and riz pari is very good at drawing characters to meet a certain requirement in the story and i think riz and melon are great villains and visually you can look at them and be like even though he's smiling these two are psychos <laughs> in their own way. Speaking of like drawings, I wanna get into the artwork actually. The artwork feels very non-manga-esque in a way. There's so much that is drawn that doesn't feel like it pertains particularly to a certain manga style if you know what I mean, like a Japanese anime inspiration, really. I read a bit more about Para and she talks about how whenever she was drawing humans, it was hard because they always looked odd. And when she was drawing animals, they felt like they were more human than the humans she drew. And so when drawing the animals and the beasts and the world, it doesn't feel like it's particularly pertained to manga. It looks like it could belong in any kind of storybook where you have the world and the buildings almost cartoonishly packed together. Seeing Lagoshi run down the street, looking at his watch in like a sweater and shoes. It, it feels like you could jump out of a storybook. It's, it's really cool to visually see this on a page. I genuinely love the style. I talked about it in a lot of other videos and I think oh, you always will find it when you read a, a manga that's gone for X amount of years. But seeing an artist get better at drawing their characters feels great to kind of witness. 
And I think for Paru in the beginning with her artwork, the drawing felt like very messy and stylistic, but it had an order to it, the chaos, right? Every single outlining of the characters kind of emboldened the way they looked. Again, I'm not an expert in drawing. This is just like what I feel when I see the early chapters and the early volumes. I, I love looking at early drawings of Lagoshi and seeing the way his eyes are structured and seeing the way other characters are structured in their design. And then looking at the later chapters and seeing that somewhere along the way, Paru refined her, her way of drawing. She really did. You can look at any kind of mangaka and say the same thing, but something about this one particularly, you can see it. The dial turned, something clicked in her head and she realized this is how the characters will look. And it's great because when they're put into different situations as well, it doesn't feel like they stay the same way and they don't always look the same way. The way Pyro also draws the characters makes it feel like they are fluid, change and grow in different circumstances. Like you don't feel like characters Characters are always fighting the same way, always look the same way. Characters are agile, and even Lagoshi when he's fighting is quick and small, like in a very cartoonish way of fighting, but it looks so great and stylistically it looks amazing. When he's dodging a blow or something and he is just as thin as like a pancake. And it makes sense within the world as well how much you can kind of stretch that realism of whether or not this is something that their species can do or can't do when something happens. It feels real and stylistically in tone with the story of Beastars. The kind of world building and the idea of interspecies relationships is something that I think is actually really unmatched in terms of world building. You may have some disagreements about how character development works, maybe the pacing's a bit off, and I do feel that with a lot of different chapters. But in terms of the world building, it feels so well fleshed out and still I'm not sure if Paru knew all this from the beginning or just slowly, slowly looked at some things that she maybe brought up and thought, I can answer that with this character or with this next conflict and flesh out the world more so that I can flesh out the characters more. Uh, people constantly, when they pitch Beastars, the people say, it's the Zootopia, but think of it as a bit more realistic. What would happen if people became very afraid of carnivores and their instincts. What would happen if two different beasts from different species came together and they had offspring? And Beastars talks about that and talks about it in a sense like it's a real world, the one we live in. Things are not the same as they used to be. Interspecies marriage is pretty normal nowadays. No one really bats an eye much. It's becoming more and more of a, a normal thing. It's, it's something that you can look at and identify as this is definitely how it parallels to our reality, right? Whenever I first understood that Lagoshi actually had a romantic attachment to Haru and later talking about interspecies relationships, that's when you start to realize, oh, how do those work? Are those a thing? And Paru will eventually answer that question for you. You plant the seeds and later you start to understand because you also start to think, well, what about other animals? Why are some animals still feral and are used for food, but some aren't? can sea beasts be animals? And that's why Sagwan comes in the story because he fleshes out how it kind of works in terms of the world that is built around the beasts, how the black market works in terms of selling meat so that carnivores can maintain a much more relaxed lifestyle while they give in to their temptations at night or behind closed doors so that society can continue to function. Every time I had a question about what if this happened, how does this work, Paru would later give an answer. And that's something that is hard to do in world building because you may forget what it is the world around you will do, or you start to realize that the things that are gonna to happen to the characters is a result of the world. So it needs to be fleshed out enough so that you can later give more context. And I do think that later Pari really looked at it and understood that I need to have this happen in the world in order for this character to grow, or I need something that can show the world more through a character. And that's why Melon, of course, really embodies the whole conflict of interspecies relationships. And again, with Lagoshi's mother. And then of course, Lagoshi's place in society, because he is a carnivore, he's trying to make sure that he can live his life within this world without disrupting what it is that makes him who he is. And by making sure that the world around him is changed for the better. I do think the world building is like really, really good. It's great. And it feels like really fleshed out, really. I can safely say it's one of those worlds that you could watch and read and honestly just go into it knowing 
only what you know from the story and it just feels like you're absorbing this information and you want to know more just like Lagoshi, you want to know more about the world around you in terms of the writing style and the text and what the story is trying to say i think the dialogue is pretty good i think it's not the best i do feel like there is some scenes where it's just too much talking and i think there are a lot of scenes that there isn't a lot of talking i feel like the best kinds of pieces of dialogue is mostly when it's characters talking introspectively mostly me with Lagoshi. i love the scenes where he's trying to differentiate and talk about the difference of like eating meat versus eating an insect and how he feels like it's such a great privilege and also a sin to be able to take a life so easily for consumption but can look at it in a way where this beast is making him stronger and in turn he's doing it for a good use specifically with the moth I think that the, the way the story is written, it isn't apologetic in what it shows, which is really cool. It doesn't try to be anything. It just tries to be its own thing, which is really nice and it's refreshing. It mixes a lot of kind of different genres in terms of like high school murder mystery. And then also just a kind of social kind of experiment talk on what it is about human instinct or beast instinct specifically and what that means and how much of it is nurture and nature it's great because it can really make you feel like these characters even though they're beasts everything can be applicable to what it is you experience in your daily life and that makes it feel like anyone could read it and relate to it if they get past the very odd stuff that comes with having beasts interact and act like humans again with like you know the whole furry thing <laughs> I do think it has some faults. I think the ending kind of is lackluster. I think the buildup is great. The pacing's great in like the final volume, but I think the ending is a bit lackluster. Uh, I do think the final chapters do have a lot in terms of like, you know, saying that Haru and Lugoshi will try and be together regardless of how hard it would be to be like ridiculed by society and Lugoshi be persecuted just for being a carnivore and always having people look at him the wrong way regardless of who he is and what he looks like, which we can look at parallels to our own life and understand how that, where that came from. It does trip and fall, but I think when the characters are really trying to figure out who they are introspectively and are dealing with characters that are pushing against their own ideals, whether it be villains or just supporting characters, makes it feel like we're understanding them more and more. You know, with Lagoshi trying to figure out his feelings, Haru also trying to figure out her feelings. I think these things are what make Beastars great. Some of the faults can get lost in however many characters there are and having to make sure that they all get development it does feel like paru spread a character is a bit too thin trying to cover a whole a range of different ones but regardless i still think it's a good read if i i have to give a score i'd be like a four out of five stars essentially if you like bna high school mysteries dora hidoro odd taxi and you know if you've maybe read paru's other work that isn't about animals you probably like beast stars definitely a unique story that there isn't much of especially with characters who are also just animals you know in terms of anthropomorphic stories a lot of the western i guess graphic novels and stories usually cover that especially in like young animation but this feels like it did it in a way that was realistic but also didn't feel like it was stupid it took itself not too seriously but at the same time it made the characters feel so human that we couldn't but help just look past the ridiculousness of interspecies relationships or the way society works and you know just accept that this is the world and you know it's fun to even laugh at sometimes and be like yeah it is kind of funny that there are like so many different size urinals for so many different size beasts but that makes sense and you know it doesn't apologize for doing that i think it's just smart in how it represents it that's what i think of beast does i don't know what do you guys think am i a furry i don't think so but thank you guys for watching and uh, let me know if you've read Beastars, you're going to, you want to, or what you've read of Beastars that you feel like also did really well. Something that's similar, you know, something like that. Because I'll be honest, watching a main character as a grey wolf, pretty fun, liked it. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe because it's free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Mugen. Have a good one.